You're listening to Subconscious Mind Mastery, podcast number 118. Thomas Miller back with you, along with Fred Dodson in this episode. Yes, Fred is back with us, and we're going to talk about the number one topic that I've heard you tell me in the coaching program of all the people that have been in the coaching program with me since we started about six weeks ago. The number one issue is money. So that is what Fred and I are going to talk about. And we have three audiobooks that really go together as a three-pack, a package of three books that deal with money, income, and career. Those three are titled Success Attracts Success, Prosperity Consciousness, and Magnetic Wealth Attraction. Now, Success Attracts Success is more about career. It's the longer of the three. Prosperity Consciousness and Magnetic Wealth Attraction are both about three hours, and they deal more, obviously, with prosperity and money. So together, you have three tools that are incredibly powerful and impactive in this, and I would encourage you, if you really want to do a deep dive, and we talk about this in the interview, but I just want to really draw attention to this, that if you really want to do a deep dive on this, and you want this to become a part of your consciousness and you want it to flow from your subconscious so that things just happen naturally, I would highly suggest you do this, that you get the three, and especially with the two shorter ones, Prosperity Consciousness and Magnetic Wealth Attraction, that you listen to them over and over and over until you've heard them probably five times each, maybe more. You want to listen to these to the extent that you know what's in the chapter when you're listening to it again. You go, oh yeah, I remember this. Oh, this is ingrained. See, that's what happens when Fred writes the books. And to a lesser degree, but some degree, it's what happens when I read the books. And the way you can replicate that deep dive is to listen to them over and over and over again. Now, I wanted to mention this before we move on. Do you know that there have been 13 audiobooks now completed? Oh my goodness, and I'm on number 14. And it's, I, Fred gets on me because I say this all the time, and I didn't in this interview, but I'm going to say it now. <laughs> number 14 is the best that he's done yet. Uh, there is so much good material in this book that I'm doing now, Being Higher Self. Oh my goodness, is it amazing. And I can't wait to get it into your hands. But if you'd like to see the the complete list of resources, go to Audible and just type in Dodson Miller, and you'll get the 13 right there together. So if there are others that you would like to download and listen to as well, some other area of your life, I'd recommend Intuition Training. That's the one that I'm hanging around right now. And I always recommend Levels of Energy, Reality Creation Technique. I mean, it's all good stuff. You know that. It's all great stuff. So that's the list. Audible, do the search, Dodson Miller, and you'll get the 13 that we have produced. That gives you that resource. Now, let's go talk to Fred Dodson about money. Oh, my goodness. Fred, it's great talking to you. I know you've had quite a busy year since I saw you in Hawaii, and I'm interested in talking to you about this because you are able to move freely about the world because of this very topic of success and money that we're going to address here. You are successful, so you have choice of where you want to spend right now. Yeah, but... um First of all, hello to all the listeners and readers. You make it sound as if first came the money, then came the freedom of choice. But I'd, I'd put it the other way around. First came exercising my freedom and uh, joy, and then with that came money. You see the, uh, the, the small difference? Yeah. I do. B do yeah. have, I guess. Which is typical, which is what people do. They think, when I have money, I can experience all this time. And uh, I say, well, when you experience the life you really want, that's when money is more likely. And when, especially when you help others experience the life they want. But in order to help others experience the life they want, you first have to experience the life you want. So if, if I had just one thing to say about money, though, um, to get right down to it, it's that uh, the money that comes to you comes through the benefit you are to others, the actual benefit and the perceived 
benefit. The actual benefit you are to others and the perceived benefit you are to others. That's really the only source of money that I know of, the only secret to money I know of. And nonetheless, you know, I, I, I can repeat this for years and years and years and people still don't seem to get it. And that's a mystery to me, you know. Is there something, um, you know, and I, I like to ask, is there something about that you don't understand? <laughs> I think of I think of those old YouTube videos from our friend Jim Rohn, where he talks about uh, in his own unique vocal ability. In order to make money, you have to add value. <laughs> uh, I, I know Jim Rohn. Have never watched his videos though, but from that example, you can actually see that everybody's been trying to teach this for thousands of years. I mean, even the ancient texts say it, and for some reason. You know, uh, people remain way below that which is possible, way, way below it. So let's let's pick a couple of things apart here just on what we've talked about so far. Let's go back to your point about making that subtle shift of having freedom and having choice of what you wanted to do, and then the money came along. For the people who don't have the money to travel about freely— wish they could, what is that subtle shift between having the choice before you have the money? These people who don't have uh, the choice to travel right now, they do have the choice to do and experience and feel other things they would like, but they deprive them of those things as long as they don't have the money. You know, um, they'd have the choice to go for uh, the walk they, they've been wanting to go for for the last few weeks. They'd have the choice to meet somebody they like. They would have the choice to get into interesting subjects. Uh, we, 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 we always have a certain, certain options, you know, and, and uh, before looking at the travel options, there's many lesser options and choices you could already be taking, which would move you more in the direction of that which is good for you true for you, right for you. The, the, the idea is that, you know, if, if I keep choosing to work with people who exhaust me, if I keep choosing to do things in my company, say if I'm an employee that aren't really right and that I don't like, um, it, it already starts there, you know. It, it's, it, it's a slave mentality. So let's say your boss wants you to do stuff that's not right and that you don't like, okay? And you do it anyway because you, you're afraid of losing your job, by extension, afraid of losing money. So the entire motivation by that is actually poverty consciousness and poverty thinking. And the day you say, no, I am choosing to no longer do this and I'm going to tell my boss it's not right and it's not good and I don't want it, you know, that's the moment you wake up to prosperity consciousness and do what's, what's truly good. Uh, for yourself and others and you know having the courage to do that and the courage to do that would imply that you believe that you're you'll be financially sustained no matter what and then you made a step into the direction of, of prosperity a small step admittedly but a first step so every day you can choose to go more in abundance direction or more in poverty direction and everybody knows what I'm talking about here we just don't uh, um, if, if you've reached a point of slave mentality, a certain low point, it's it's difficult to get out, you know. What was the tipping point for you that turned your life from getting by to abundance? Well, um, I, I, I was financially getting by for a very, very long time, one could say, for maybe uh, from age zero <laughs> to age 30, I'd say. Now I'm uh, 42, so I've been well off since about 12 years. But before that, if if I, uh, you know, look at it objectively, in my 20s, when I was still fairly poor and had to worry about how to pay the rent and sometimes even about how to buy food, I was already behaving and and acting 
like a rich person. So if, if I'd work for this company and not accept certain customers' behaviors, you know, or um, I, was, I was already treating myself with dignity and, and self-respect long before the money came in. And I was already writing books in the assumption that those books would make a lot of money for me someday because they're just so good. Even though I had already written three books and was making virtually no money off them at all, but I kept on writing, not for the sake of money, but for the sake of pure enjoyment and and knowing that this is good material. And if something is good material, it's it's going to pay off eventually because you are actually benefiting people, okay? So I don't know where the shift came from. Maybe it came from reading up on books on, on wealth, okay, uh, s- such as the books I write now. Maybe it came from that. It came from studying what wealth is about and who is wealthy and, and why are these people wealthy? How do they conduct themselves? And if I were to hang out with wealthy people, what would I feel? And one of the main things I always felt is a certain dignity and self-respect, you know, knowing when to say yes and, and when to say no. And also a, a keen awareness of other people's uh, deepest desires and deepest wants. And that's how they conduct their business, by fulfilling people's desires and wants. So um, it came through the study, I guess, the study of the rich, the study of the successful, the hanging out with them, the being interested in them. Lots and lots and lots of study, not university study, in fact, but study of what I actually want. There's no university study called, you know, how to be rich. There's uh, economics, but I, I specifically studied the rich and how to be rich. And I think that's how I became rich, Thomas Miller. <laughs> Were there any actions that you took differently that made a difference in that shift point somewhere around 30 years old? Were you doing the same thing and it just started working or did you change something up and that made the difference? I I, I consistently, the difference, the richness I experienced at 30 was already beginning to form at 24. Um, The attitude shift had already come at 24, but in the physical universe, it just takes a while for a change of consciousness to reflect in the physical world. In this case, it took six years or so. Okay, the attitude shift came and then six years later, the money came. I just kept consistently um, doing what I love, being of service to people, being of benefit consistently over and over again, uh, you know, uh, serving people, serving humanity, serving people. And... um, Uh, modifying small things, you know, modifying things here and there on the way, but the the basic attitude shifted years before it actually manifested. In one of the books, you talk about three circles, basically. One circle is what you love to do. One circle is what the market demands or what the market is interested in. And then the third circle being the overlap of where those two intersect or where those two meet. I think that's a back to the value proposition. Isn't that a great way to think about what can I offer? Not only what I love to do, because if you love to uh, sit on an aspen tree branch and play the harp, you might not have many tips in your jar. Right. What do I love and what do they love? The, The mixture, the intersection of that. You know, is, is pure gold, actually. What, what am I passionate about? What gives me energy to get up every morning, you know, and, and drives me to keep getting better and better? That's what I'm passionate about. And what are people passionate about? And if you can combine those two, that's gold. Do you have any tips for people to maybe a checklist if they have ideas of how they can discern whether there's a market for those ideas? You see this a lot on Shark Tank, for example. People come up before the sharks with the latest, greatest new th- solution to some problem, and all five of the sharks will look at them and say, hey, you didn't sell me that there's a need for that. Yeah, well, first of all, um, 
there's a market for almost anything if you can stay consistent with it and prove its benefit. Uh, you can market almost anything. And and secondly, there's there's stuff that is more more easy to to you know you're looking for the stuff that's more easy to provide. But if you stay consistent with something, you can make it work. You can create a market for it that wasn't there before. By the way, but you're you're asking well, what is easier to market? What is instant? Um, to answer that question, I recommend a person looks at what they spend money for, you know, what, what do they spend money for? And, and, and that gives them the answer. It's always, always the same thing over and over. And what would they spend money for, um, on things that don't exist yet? And that's when they have their, you know, that, that, that's when they have their answer. So there's something they keep missing and they keep lacking and they would spend money for that and they'd be like oh that's a good idea uh let me find an example what if i had these uh house shoes that would at the same time vacuum the floor you know and that'd be kind of cool and and in japan it actually now exists and it actually sells it sells quite well if it's something you're lacking and would really like that would make your life better or more convenient um, you can assume, because humans are fairly similar, that others would like it too. Okay, well, what is, answer the question right now, Thomas. What is something that you keep wanting but not finding? Audio products that will help change foundational structures of my exactly. paradigm. Exactly. The, the, um, there's a lot of fiction and, uh, you know, the, the, the usual stuff at, at, at Audible, for example, but it could use some more. That's right. The, the, the best way to, to build a business is to find something that you're really into and have been looking for, you know, and that by because of that, others have been looking for it too and then try to make a business out of that, which is actually what I did. The books I write are the books that I couldn't find. Exactly. And what you're doing is, is uh, you're actually making money with my audio books um, because that's what you couldn't find, right? Yeah, exactly. And honored to be the voice of these books, to bring them to life on audio. That uh, the, the momentum on this is growing so much. And audio books, as you, I think you know, are growing faster than printed books now nationwide across the board. Yeah, because um, they're, they're, they're much easier to, to digest. Because we have, a, especially because we have a lot of unused time in the car, right? People tell me all the time they like to listen to the books because they can do it driving. They can do it while they're the doing gym. housework. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I know one guy who listens to our stuff while he's in the shower. <laughs> he listens while he's showering. I mean, that's making the most of your time right there. Well, he, he would need. Oh, so does does that mean that phones are waterproof these days? Actually, you know, you can get a Bluetooth waterproof oh, right. speaker that sticks to the wall. So they do. I mean, this is a world that we, and especially in the world of technology, where we have so many things accessible to us like that. And now, of course, the whole Alexa thing, you can talk to the Amazon Echo and say, I'm not going to say it too loud because I have one sitting right across the room and then we'll get some noise in the background. But you can, you can ask Alexa... To play, oh, see, she just lit up. <laughs> Never mind, Alexa, <laughs> back to sleep. <laughs> but you could ask her to play one of our books, and just she starts like success attracts success. You could start right in, and she'll start with wherever you left off on the last device. It's really okay. truly amazing. Is that a were you paid to do this Alexa plug in this podcast? No, but I want to. I want to get it where uh, Amazon recognizes. Hey, Alexa, just play Fred Dodson, and then it, and then she asks, "What do you want to hear?" So we can. There's an right, opportunity right. there. There's you're talking about seeing an right. opportunity. Instead of going down the Audible route, we need to have an Alexa Fred Dodson whole thing, and then you could put your uh, some of your other um, materials on there as well. So I mean, there's there's all kinds of ways to. To slice and right. dice. So here. somebody brings up uh, Fred Dotson in a conversation, and the annoying, ever-present Alexa says, "Did you mention Fred Dotson? Here's here's a book you can listen to." <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
or, or better yet, did you mention Fred Dodson? Oh, he's great. What would you like to hear from Fred? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, he, he's one of idea. our favorites. Not in my house, but fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the energy fields of the rich. That's actually one of the chapters in Prosperity Consciousness. As you've done research and observation and study, what do you see different in wealthy people versus people that are not? Oh, there, there's a whole list of things, which which is why I wrote those books, you know. Um, those books list all of those things. Magnetic Wealth Attraction, as well as Prosperity Consciousness, as well as my video course, Money Training, lists precisely that. We often mischaracterize the rich um, as being evil and uh, corrupt and, and, and whatnot. And I don't find that to be true at all. I, I know many of them. I know myself, okay? I have plenty of money and uh, I'm not corrupt and evil at all. And, and nor are the people I know. I've, I've very rarely met a, a rich person who's corrupt and evil um, because it, it just doesn't sync with attracting money. Because if you attract money, you have to be very kind to people, actually, and love people and love customers and love your business. That's what attracts money. So if anybody's evil and corrupt and became rich, it's always at the expense of something else, such as their health, or it's only temporary uh, richness, or at the expense of their freedom, they go to jail eventually, you know. So, so, so that's one of the things. There's a keen interest in, in, in serving people. I say this again, value again. I can't generalize, you know. There's, there's many different types of people. That's one of the things that applies to almost all of them. But, but you can't really generalize. Um, there's a, in many of them, there's a, a deep awareness of people's psychology, especially in, in people who got rich through their businesses, in in marketing in a type of marketing that is deeply familiar with how people work how they tick um, so i'd recommend anybody who who wants riches to at least have a peripheral knowledge of the basics of marketing let's put it on the scale of energy from the book and audiobook levels of energy and one of the other chapters and it's a theme that's repeated okay, 300 to 550 these. i'd say yeah, exactly. It would be the money range. And at the top of that, you mentioned that love creates prosperity. Yeah, it does. As I just said, love of your business, love of your customer, love of uh, money also, unfortunately. I know people don't want to hear that, but you know, just enjoying money greatly, enjoying money making, money give, enjoying loving money giving, loving money taking. So... As, as I say in, in my money training course, um, you got to be free in, in giving and taking. And, and one of, that's, that's really one of the major stoppers that you can shift. And when you shift that inside of yourself, you will see a change in your finances. Imagine requesting money from someone and taking money from someone, uh, taking all of their money, you know, and imagine giving all of your money. And if, if either of those make you uncomfortable, you got stuff to work on in your energy body, so to speak. So th- there, sh- there should be a great comfort and joy with giving and with taking. And um, you, you'll find that many people who, who uh, have issues on one of both or on both of them, actually, they'll, they'll have issues with giving and issues with taking. So, so I'd, I'd be free in both. You know, you can give, 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 and you can take, take, take. You can give that refund. You cannot give that refund, and and both are completely fine. So I'd say a rich guy is fine with giving a refund and fine with not giving a refund. And when I say that, I'd like the listener to feel what that triggers. What does it trigger giving a refund? Does it trigger anger? And what does it trigger not giving a refund? Does it trigger guilt? I'd like you to look inside yourself what triggers you regarding money and seek to overcome that, okay? 
because these triggers indicate there's that there's some kind of lack thinking, poverty thinking. If you don't want to give a refund and you're angry about it, you, you live in a in a poverty mindset that you don't have enough money and you gave so much, why should I give a refund? And on the other side, if you don't want to give a refund and feel guilty about that, that's also a poverty mindset because you don't think you, you think it's a problem to make other people abundant, but it's not. Everybody can be abundant, including yourself. So you can freely give and freely take, depending on situation and depending on context. So so that's a pretty, it's, it may sound abstract, I'm talking about it now, but that, that's something, in my view, uh, to very deeply explore and look into uh, over the next couple of weeks, months, maybe even years. It took me several years to understand that, to understand abundance and that in abundance you can give everything and take everything in abundance if the universe is an abundant place i can give all of my money away and have it back again the next day and i can take somebody's money entirely and he can have it back the next day so i'm never afraid to ask money from people you know i'm never like oh poor guy i'm taking his money shouldn't i give him a better price no because I know that he can have it back if he believes so, and if he's worth it, if he deserves it, if he feels of value, you know. Likewise, I don't mind giving all my money away or losing it all, so to speak, because I know I can have it back by virtue of who I am and of virtue of my skill. So, um, you know, it's, it's all about knowing that money comes from within or from the universe, or from the highest source in the universe, one of those three. It doesn't come from specific jobs or specific people or specific deals. It all comes from within. Because if you were to lose all of your jobs and all of your contracts, you know, what would you do? Would you still have the potent potential within to regenerate all of that money? Does that make sense, Thomas? I think by the time I got through, so we did Success Attracts Success, and then a couple of other books, and then we did Prosperity Consciousness, and then we did Magnetic Wealth Attraction right after that. So by the time I finally had done Wealth Attraction, it really sunk into me that money comes from higher source. Money comes, as you said in that book, from God. And when I finally embraced that, it shifted everything. Yes, it actually comes from the same source that created everything, you know. Um, and once you get that, it does shift everything. That's, that's good. Thanks for getting it. Let's hop back to the energy scale and take a look at the low level of the scale. Now, most of the listeners to this podcast have probably picked up levels of energy. So they know what we're talking about the low level of energy of fear. There's probably nothing that evokes fear faster than a empty or near empty bank account. What do people do when they are faced with bills and no potential source of income to meet those bills? And it would be real easy to tip down to the low energy of, of the lower end of the energy scale. Well, I say that that's the moment you, you get rich. Okay, you don't get rich in the moments you're comfortable and everything's going well because being comfortable uh, tends to make people uh, complacent and, and lazy. So the, one of the best opportunities to get rich is when you have nothing, when you've lost everything, when you've hit rock bottom. It is how you, who you are in those moments that determines your future. So are you going to be confident and calm in those moments as if riches are coming to you? Are you going to be at ease or are you going to panic and succumb to fear? Those are the crucial defining moments of your life. And I have confronted this rock bottom moment several times throughout my life and it was very helpful, helpful for me to do so. I've hit rock bottom a few times, and with each time I became more comfortable with it and at ease because I knew that, you know, I, I was forced to know and realize that wealth is within, and I can still 
feel at ease inside and confident inside and keep my dignity and behave in, in, in ways as if I were well off, you know. So if you can behave well off uh, when you've hit rock bottom, you made it. You, you made the shift. So I wouldn't necessarily say that these difficult situations are, are bad. They can really train you to, to get up to speed, you know, to say, wow, this just keeps repeating. Um, what's going on here? What's going on within me? Again, I'm struggling to pay, to pay the rent and again and again and again. What needs to shift inside of me and in my outward actions based on my new self uh, uh, to change that? And I found that um, such moments of, of being vulnerable and uncertain can be fantastic training, can, can be great training to find worth and value independent of money within. Like, who am I if I lost everything? Who am I without my job? Who am I without this? Who am I without the house? You know, am I still someone? And that takes you back to who you really are. And I got to say that a lot of people who hit rock bottom like that do so because they lost themselves. They no longer find value in themselves. They only look for value externally. They look for value in a house, in, a, in objects, in a TV set, in a car. They think a car gives them value. And then it's like the universe punishes them and, and makes them not able to afford these external things to show them who they really are. And once they find that they are someone, that they are energy and spirit and a human being with dignity independent of owning anything, that's when they become free, free of money. And once they become free of money, it paradoxically becomes much easier to participate in the money game because they're no longer so attached. They no longer identify with it so strongly. At three points in my life, I've actually either, I, I've lost all of my money at three points in my life. Once I gave it away deliberately, the second time it got stolen, and the third time I invested it all, which isn't really losing it, but I was just courageous enough to invest everything. And I do so as a practice, I did so as a practice to be okay with nothing. Paradoxically, the courage to be okay with nothing gives you access to everything. And I know all this sounds pretty far out and, and as if it would require a lot of courage, but think about it. Who are you without all of that money? Are you still someone? Who are you without your job? And if you can be at ease and confident without anything, it becomes much, much easier to get everything. And when you trust that it's from higher source and you realize that you have that on time. your side, it makes the, yeah, makes the whole perspective yeah. shift. All the time, you, you never need to go back to that situation of struggling to pay the rent again. I mean, it's out without dignity. You don't have to experience that. You don't have to struggle like that. You got to start loving and respecting yourself and then loving and respecting others. But first you got to love yourself deeply and then you got to start loving your potential customers deeply, okay? Love, that's how love makes money. There was a beautiful soul who lived in Dallas. She's gone now, but she was the widow of a gentleman who had been successful in business. So she wasn't um, she wasn't missing tomorrow's meal by any chance. And she was of the Christian faith, but she just had the most precious spirit. And she would say over and over, she would say, oh, I'm a daughter of the king. I have no need for anything. I'll be taken care of. And she lived her life like that. She truly, she viewed herself as a daughter of the king of the universe. And because of that, she was taken care of. She was set. She right. had if no needs. If you look needs. closely at her life, what you're going to find is that she's been having this kind of self-talk for many, many years. Okay? Um, the self-talk you have over years, it accumulates and it does manifest. Let's talk about the book Success Attracts Success. So we've got a three-pack, Magnetic Wealth Attraction, Prosperity Consciousness, and then the other one that's 
really more about career and job is success attracts success. So this momentum of success, I've always, when I was working in the medical area and doctors were kind of stuck and they were bemoaning their business, I would always tell them to uh, take some, open up to Medicare. Usually these doctors would be closed to new Medicare patients. And I would tell them to open up to new Medicare patients because it gives you momentum. Momentum attracts or breeds momentum. You wrote the book, Success Attracts Success. It's very true. Once you get the spark, then the rest starts to kick in place. Yeah, it gains a life of its own. It starts with effort, 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 effort. And then when it get, once it gains momentum, less effort is required, less and less effort. You know, And then uh, the success you've already built attracts success on its own. You can only be successful if you are already successful. That's why the book is titled that way. It's a, it's a profound, it's, it's a simple but very profound message. The title itself would actually be enough. If, if a person only saw the title and understood the title, you wouldn't have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You, 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 yeah. Enough said, right? <laughs> well, you're, all of your books fit together so well. I was just making a note here. So intuition training, right? You bring intuition into the money process. So you ask from higher source. You get an intuitive answer. Another of your books, The Miracles of Attention and Awareness, two things that you said are probably the, the hallmark of all of your work, some of the most important concepts, where you put your attention, where you put your focus. And related to money, if you're putting your focus on lack, eh, you're sure. going to get more. Sure. But I have to say that the more success you have, the easier it gets to do this, and often I, 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 I can no longer relate to people who are in, in, in those low states. And, and what I have to learn is, is that they require a little more than that, okay? They require a little more assistance, a, a little more help, because you reach these really high levels where everything seems so easy and, and smooth and seamless, you know? and and. I'm glad there's, you know, there's still coaches out there who, who, like you, who perhaps talk to people who are, who've hit rock bottom, you know, because it's really difficult for me to communicate when, when everything's going so easily for me. So what I can then say is that the reason it's going so easily for me is because I, I really put a lot of effort into it back in the day. Okay. I, focused and focused and focused and focused and focused and did every trick in the book, everything I could find. Um, because because of my, I, I think I made it my number one priority back in the day when I was 24, 25, just because I was so sick of experiencing the same lack over and over, the same struggle to pay the rent over and over. I actually decided never ever again. And once I made that decision, it happened again, and I redecided, and then it happened again, struggling to pay the rent again. I thought enough already, you know. And I redecided, and then it happened again, and then eventually, your new intention and decision overrides the old one. You really gotta. It's true, you know. It sounds so so lame because everybody says it nowadays, but you really gotta stick to it. It's really sort of a stubborn persistence. And, 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 and that is true. That really is true. Even though we've heard it so many times, it, it really is about persistence, about focus, about sticking with it no matter what. And then eventually, you know, you get out of the, the lower zones and everything becomes very, very easy. Uh, that, that's what I can tell all listeners out there. It does become very easy. You have really become a benchmark of productivity. I've been watching you for several years now, and you are still turning out more videos than I can imagine how somebody can produce. You're still turning out books. You're still doing seminars. Even with the level of success of where you are, you're, it seems like your day-to-day -day is as though you were uh, still right in the – I mean, you are still right absolutely in the thick of it. Well, yeah, if you found your, you know, life's purpose and passion, uh, um, you keep doing it no matter how much money you have. It shouldn't even be about the money. 
money is a side effect of doing what you love. So uh, you can tell by certain people, they the moment they make money, they quit. That means for them, it was never about the subject or the passion. It was all about the money, you know. Um, I'll keep on doing that until the day I die because I love doing it, because I want to do it, because I enjoy doing it, because I feel energized by doing it, because it's a mission and a life purpose. Moreover, um, another thing, you know, for, for prosperity is you don't rest on, on past success. There's no such thing as the past. Any failure, any success of the past is in the past. It has nothing to do with the present. In fact... I'm never going to retire. I believe retirement is, uh, th there's no such thing as retirement for me. Well, why would you want to retire if you found something you love? <laughs> I was just thinking, you're 42. When you're 82, I just can't imagine. If you've turned out the volume of material that you have at this early age, who knows what the future will hold, but the impact that you're going to have on the world, the legacy that you're going to leave to the next generation is yeah, going to be awesome. remarkable. I don't believe in retirement because I see what happens to people who retire. You know, they just decline. Yeah, they, they, they decline. It's, it's quite obvious. Everybody knows this. So, so why retire? And if I keep going in this pace... Um, it's going to turn out not only quite well for me, but quite well for the many people uh, whose lives I, I've had the privilege to touch. So let's package up these three books. We have Magnetic Wealth Attraction, Prosperity Consciousness, Success Attracts Success. I would suggest, I was thinking about how you and I both are involved in these books. You have, from, from your end, hours and hours and hours of research writing the material itself, reviewing the material, publishing the material, etc. You hand it off after the book has been published. I read, narrate the book, and then I have to go back and proofread the book. So it's a complete immersion because to read every one of these phrases is really almost sentence by sentence to get the inflections right. In other words, you and I have totally absorbed into this material by the time the book is finished. What I would suggest to people is to pick up the book and audio book and read slash listen together so they get both the visual and the audible sense, and not to just do it once and set it aside. These are three books that if you're struggling in the money area, that you should have them on autoplay all the time and just be going over them and over them and over them, because if... Really, I think if people would listen to them five or six times back to back to back, that would probably be about the same level of immersion that you and I have of our respective areas of creating them. Yeah, I'd, I'd go so far as to say that you don't really need any, you don't need to know any more than that on the subject. Uh, that's already too much. Three books is already too much. And um, I say this because, you know, I, I, I've read about, I've certainly read a hundred books uh, in my life on, on wealth and, and money attraction. But if looking back now, it would have been enough to just read one and apply it properly. That's right. It's a matter of cutting through all the old sludge, isn't it? Yeah. Just applying one or two concepts, you know. Nonetheless, I have this drive to write more and more and more on it, even though it would be enough just for the sake of repetition but having these books, you, you, you actually already know everything there is to know. It's about putting it into practice yourself and not knowing more. People easily get addicted to the knowledge, to knowing. Um, I, I wish they'd be just as addicted to doing, to taking action, you know, for their own business and focusing on their own, building their own career. And if you do that, you've done it correctly, then you've used these books for your own business, your own ideas, your own vision, rather than making the books themselves the uh, center of your focus. Yeah, that's very true. There is so much wisdom and knowledge on each page. If you just, if you, if you just applied a little bit of it, it would make a huge difference. I know I have, and I know it has made such a big difference. Well, thank you so much, Fred, for stepping back in and catching us up on not only this topic, but what you've been doing as well. And 
um, just amazing work, and I really appreciate being able to have my name attached to it as well. All right. Thank you, Thomas. And um, having your name attached to it is, by the way, I, I, I told you this when I met you in Hawaii, it is part of uh, prosperity thinking because I'm actually uh, letting you have 50% of the income of the audiobooks. And people have criticized me for that. And they've asked me, well, why would you give the narrator 50%? Nobody does that in the industry. But the, the, the reason is obvious because as if, if these books make you wealthy, you're going to promote them. Absolutely. In fact, I'm working on some marketing outside of the podcast right now. And, and, and that's what people often fail to understand. As you help others uh, make money, you get more money. It's, it's, it's so simple. Uh, my, my goal is that we have so many audiobooks selling all over the world that neither of us would have to uh, do anything else that month, even though we would. We wouldn't have to. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I reached that stage 12 years ago, and you're going to reach it too, actually, because it's your goal. You're going to reach it. I, I predict you're going to reach it within three years, okay? All right. You got it. Mark it, Dano. <laughs> <laughs> Always great talking to you, my friend. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. And you know, if that was good, if what you just heard was good, there's a lot more great stuff in the books. Really, you get the combination of both best of both worlds. You get to listen to a podcast. It's kind of like listening to a podcast with Fred as the host, with my voice. <laughs> That's kind of the, the combination of what you're dealing with when you get the audiobooks. So, success attracts success, prosperity consciousness, and magnetic wealth attraction. I hope that you'll pick them up and put them on a loop and listen to them over and over and over again. That's it for this podcast. Thank you for listening. Next time, we're going to re I'm going to just go ahead and release this together. The number two issue of the coaching program has been how to calm down your thoughts. So I'm going to address that in podcast number 119. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening. I'm Thomas Miller. Enjoy the journey.